Okay, let us look at this example where they're asking us to um, find the velocity and acceleration of a particle. So the example say, says that there's a link and at uh, point O, point O is right here, and as a result of the constant angular velocity, so we have an angular velocity of 3 radians per second, it drives, the, the constant velocity drives the pipe P for a short distance along the guide. And the guide has an expression equal to R equals 0 0.4 theta. Okay, so we have a guide that is part of a mechanism you can think of, which is um, the distance is 0 0.04 times theta in, in the, the units are in meters. And obviously, theta is in radians. All right. So they're telling us determine the velocity and acceleration of the particle at the instant uh, r equals 0 0.5 meters. Okay. So we know that r, the, the, the distance traveled, is 0 0.4 and at, given, at a given angle, right? So it's uh, basically as a function, right? So right here is going to have a distance, right here is going to have a distance, etc. And obviously, if we want to find the, the instantaneous velocity, we'll have to do the r dt, which is equal to r dot. And this is the same as, this is the same as if we say the r dt equals to r d of the function theta dt then this is the same as 0 0.4 d theta dt okay so r dot is equal to 0 0.4 theta dot all right same way the second derivative of r with respect to t is equal to the second derivative of the angle with respect to t. So r dot dot equals 0 0.4 theta dot dot. Okay, so this is one part of it. This is with respect to the distance. All right, they're also telling us that there's an angular velocity of three radians per second. So this is already a derivative. This is already uh, the theta dt. Okay, so if we want to find the acceleration, we just have to say the second der derivative of that is zero because the theta dt equals three. So it's a constant. The second derivative of a constant is, or the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so this is the second part. So they're asking us determine the instant, uh, the, yeah, determine the velocity and the acceleration at instant r equals 0 0.5. So the distance when r equals 0 0.5, wherever that might be here, is where we need to find everything. So if we go ahead and find, well, if we put our expressions together, say r equals 0 0.4 times theta, but we know that this is known is 0 0.5, then theta equals 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.4. Okay, so if you do that computation, it will tell you that this is 1.25 radians. And if you want to find the derivative of r with respect to time, then you go ahead and start here which we already did 0 0.4 times the change in angle with respect to time but luckily they already gave us that expression so this is one answer that we're going to use in a minute here um, so r dot is equal to 0 0.4 times theta dot and theta dot is the angular velocity three radians per second 
So this is 0 0.4 times 3, and this is 1.2 meters per second. Okay, because radians, uh, sorry, because radians is not going to be affecting the units, and um, the radius is in meters. And obviously we have the T for time. So R dot is radians per seconds. And R dot is the same as the velocity in the radial direction, right? All right, so we actually just found out what's the velocity. Um, if we want to find out the acceleration, what we have to do is we say, okay, the acceleration is in actually the magnitude of the acceleration is the square root of r of the acceleration in the real direction squared plus the acceleration in the tangential direction squared all right so right here we don't have radio we don't have that and we don't have this we don't have the radio acceleration we don't have the tangential acceleration okay but in order to find the radio acceleration there's a formula that we need so the radial acceleration is equal to r dot dot minus r and theta dot squared this is a, form a formula that we have to remember or write down in a place that we can find easily and also the tangential acceleration is or in this case, the acceleration round um, on the on the angular acceleration is r theta dot dot plus two times r dot theta dot. Okay, so we have everything here. We know that this is zero, and we know that this is 0.5. So basically, what we have to do is start solving for this. So 0 minus 0 0.5, that is multiplying theta dot, which is 3 radians per second, squared, that is 4.5 meters per second. But there's a minus, so minus 4.5 meters per second squared. Remember, the magnitude and the direction are given by the sign and the value of the acceleration so the sign is very important because acceleration has a direction all right so we just found um, the um, acceleration with respect to the radius now the acceleration along the angles or the theta is going to be r which we already know that is um, um, 0 0.4 what is, is 1.25 Wait, I'm sorry. R is 0 0.5, yeah. But theta dot dot is 0, right? Because if theta dot is 0, where am I? Okay, yeah, because the second derivative of, zero, of theta is 0. So theta dot dot is 0. So we don't have to do this part at all. But we do have to do this part. So 2 times R dot, which is... 0 0.4 times 3, so 1.2, and um, theta dot, which is 3. Okay, so 6 times 1.2 is 7.2 meters per second squared. Okay, so in if we want to find the acceleration and the velocity, we have to do this. Oh, actually, we forgot to write down for the velocity. The velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is square root of the radial velocity squared plus the tangential velocity or the angular velocity squared, square root of that. So here we only have the radial velocity. We have to find the tangential velocity. And let's find over here. The tangential velocity is equal to, so just to make sure, radial velocity is r dot. T 
tangential velocity is the distance times theta dot. So we said that this guy right here is r dot is 1.2 meters per second and the tangential or the sorry the angular velocity is r times uh, the change in angle with time. So this is basically 0 0.5 times 3 which is 1.5 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so this is the square root of 1.2 squared plus 1.5 squared square root of that. And the um, acceleration is going to be negative 4.5 squared plus 7.2 squared and whatever this is. So let's use a calculator. Um, we're going to do 1.2 times 1.2 plus 1.5 times 1.5 equals 3.69. So the magnitude, the velocity is square root of 3.69. And the magnitude of the acceleration is 4.5 times 4.5 because it's 4.5 squared plus 7.2 times 7.2. This is 72. 9 square root of that. All right, so you basically have to find out what is the square root of that, and we are ready to go. So it's 8.49 meters per second squared. So this is the magnitude of the acceleration but you need to know what is your radial and your um, angular accelerations. So it's very easy. So you find your distance. What is the derivative of the distance? Luckily, in curvilinear um, problems with polar coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, a lot of the things are given in functions because that's the beauty of it, that you can specify different things param parametrically, meaning uh, um, you can identify the exact location of things with respect to time and distance. So go ahead and follow this process where you find your distance, the change in distance with time, the change in um, velocity with time is your acceleration, then your change in angle with time, and the acceleration term for that angular change. And then you simply compute these four expressions, and that's how you find your magnitude for velocity and acceleration.